We've wished for a long time to bring College Game Day here to the Washington campus. The Susilo Library. That's a library, gentlemen. <laughs> it's a place to study. Why do you say that every week to us? And, 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 and why are you looking at David? Yeah, that's not cool at all. <laughs> She's a real fan cam zooming over Red Square. One of the largest books in the world, I'm told, is, is in that library. It's on look at, Ten. Look it's like the size of a person. Look at this scene out here. This is impressive. These are right football fans out wow. here. Well, this defense is trying to slow down the Ducks offense. If you compare Oregon to Baylor, I know they're different stylistically. Both have put up silly numbers against very overmatched defenses so far. Baylor, 282 points in four games. I know it's the Wofford Terriers and UL Monroe and Buffalo, but against West Virginia, 73 points, 864 yards. It could have been 1,000 if they wanted it to be. Easily. Very easily. So, again, not the toughest competition, but two ridiculous offenses. Las Vegas tells us if they played, the over-under would be 100. 100. Take the over. Art Bryles <laughs> has had great continuity. Philip Montgomery, the offensive coordinator. Randy Clements, the running backs coach. Gino, they've been together for about 15 years, back to the, the Texas high school rank. So it's been a slow build where they are now. Yeah, that's the Bryles way. He's all about continuity. But, Chris, there was a time about 10 years ago where Baylor players wore replica jerseys during games because their uniform supplier didn't think they deserved the good stuff. Even their own athletic director has said that the talent level at the time was that of a decent FCS program. But now fast forward to 2013, where Baylor football is on the brink of being the next big thing. There's the speed of Goodley. Burst oh. to the outside. Punch the stopwatch. Three plays. Baylor finds the end zone. Oh, sure. Everybody is paying attention to Baylor football now. When you think about what we could do, I guess scary is a good word to put it. Undefeated Baylor leads the nation in total offense. In passing offense. Oh, what a grab! In scoring offense, averaging 70 and a half points per game. Fast, quick, touchdown. Could this offense score 100 points? Most definitely. We could, without a doubt. Baylor has become the Oregon of the Southwest. Lots of points, lots of fashion statements. We have five different helmets, three different jerseys, two different pairs of shoes. We could wear something different for five years in a row. The chrome helmets, uh, they look good. It's something new. It's something that says this is Baylor. It was a big, big deal for us. A $260 million stadium project is also something new. Back in 03, you said, hey, I need to raise $260 million for a stadium. How much money do you think you might have been able to get people to donate back then? Yeah, we would have had a hard time getting the first $260 together, I think, at that point. Nothing available. Uh-oh, ball. Loses the football. Oh. Minnesota comes up with it. Oh. Growing up, I didn't really think that, you know, they could be contending for anything, honestly. A lot of negativity. Just kind of a, a complacency, I guess, of we're not good. Athletic director Ian McCaw hired Art Bryles in 2008. Bryles inherited a program in disarray and a stadium in decay. The Bears hadn't had a winning season since 1995. A lot of people thought that this was a coaching graveyard and uh, the fact that Art wanted this job, was excited and energized by it, uh, really impressed me. It's a hustle because you're selling everything on hope and vision and faith. I mean, that's what we had to sell. You know, because it wasn't in reality. Reality wasn't what it needed to be. Griffin inside the 10. Heisman touchdown. The reality changed two seasons ago. Robert Griffin III won a Heisman, and Baylor won 10 games, including a bowl victory against Washington. Now, it's nothing but positive. It's, it's nothing but why not us? We're getting calls from great recruits all over the nation. It's a big deal now. It's good. Baylor's a good thing. As the new Baylor Stadium goes up, so do the expectations for a program once left for dead. Turns out, Baylor football is no longer in the toilet. 
That new stadium opens next season and replaces 63-year-old Floyd Casey Stadium, which was built for a grand total of one and a half million dollars. In the new place, one and a half million gets you a suite overlooking the end zone. And Chris, Baylor fans are a little bit nervous about a possible coaching change at the University of Texas. Baylor President Kenneth Starr has said that Baylor will do everything it can to keep Art Briles right where he is in Waco. Well, Joe, they should. I, I enjoyed that piece. I mean, Bryce Petty, first year starting quarterback. I know it's early, the competition hasn't been there. He's actually ahead of RG3 Heisman season stats. 26 yards in attempt. It, it, is that pretty good? Yeah, that's I solid. Think that's pretty good. <laughs> Not bad. Not Remember bad. when RG3 won the Heisman and he made a comment that we're just getting started at Baylor? I thought, just getting started. I, I think everybody thought RG3, great year, Heisman. Goodbye, Baylor. Take care. Nick Florence last year, last 30 games now, they've scored 48 points a game. So how are they doing it? They stretch you with formations horizontally, and then they attack vertically. And if you don't reroute the wide receivers, you're in trouble because of the speed that they have. Here he is in rhythm. The receiver isn't jammed. The defensive back has a couple steps on Antoine Goodley. Look at Goodley's speed. He just leaves him and gets into the end zone. Now they're back in cover two. Two high safeties are worried about that pass game. Now you got to deal with one of the best tailbacks in the country, the former Oregon Duck, Lake Seastrunk. And look what he can do with the poor tackling, poor angles. Here's six guys that are either even or ahead of him. Look at the speed of Seastrunk. He leaves these guys behind and look up front. Goodley not only makes the play, but throws the defensive back down. Now they have the ability again to attack. If you're going to try to cheat as the ball snaps, get a safety down against Seastrunk, you put a safety in the middle, and you're not rerouting these wide receivers. There's just too much speed. Here's Tevin Reese not getting jammed, gets upfield. Great throw again by Petty. And they scored 28 points in the first quarter like that. Running and throwing, stretching you horizontally, stretching you vertically, and then they have the running game of Seastrunk. The only team that I see on their schedule that can jam those wide receivers and have a dominant defensive line is yeah, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Other than Oklahoma, they're going to have to just have an off day yeah. for anybody to stop this Baylor offense. They're for real. Yeah, I agree with you. And before the West Virginia game, that's how I felt. People were like, they didn't play anybody. Look at the competition. But when you watch them execute that offense, it's with such great precision. I was impressed if they did it against air. Bryce Petty right now, he's playing with extremely, extremely high amount of confidence. And he has all the weapons around him to get that offense going. So impressed with that offense, but the biggest test is going to be against Oklahoma. There's no yeah. doubt about that. For me, this is the best offense in the country. And, and we're not wow. even seeing all the elements that's going to happen. But they put you in such a bind defensively because they block run plays mm -hmm. consistently. And if your linebackers come up and play run, they pull the ball out and they dump it to a wide receiver. It can't be stopped. And this is a better offense than Oregon because Bryce Petty in the red zone later in the season when he's going to need to run it, big physical presence, a better running back at the running back spot. This is the best offense. That's what I think is the difference. The yeah. running back. If you swing, if Oregon, if Lake Seastrook would have stayed at X Duck. This game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If he had stayed at Oregon. Difference. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. now you got the first road game after four home games. The Purple Cats come home off two road losses. History says Mr. Snyder's in a, a dangerous underdog there. Any trouble? Any trouble for the Bears in Manhattan? I think yes. All these great things, all these. <laughs> great job. Honestly, this is, this is the toughest challenge is when everybody tells you how great you are. For coaches that are building programs up, it's getting your players to respect opponents like Kansas State. I think, I think Baylor wins, but I won't be shocked if they get tested today, Manhattan. Yeah, and, and it's so tough because everything's come so easy. Mm -hmm. So if Snyder and them can make it a little bit difficult and make them struggle a little bit, yeah. not happen. That's Blowout. Wipe out. I agree. I think it's going to be a blowout. A slow start, though, for Baylor because Kansas State will try to lower. Slow. They can't start offense, slow. <laughs> you know, try to keep the ball out of the offense's hands, but then they catch fire in the second half. I got Baylor big. They probably won't score 70 like they have the last three games. But can they still chew clock and possess the ball? When, when Colin Klein was there, that was the M.O. They have not run the ball to their own standards the last Kansas couple of games. Kansas State, we all know, the formula is win the turnover margin, win the special teams, exactly. win the field position. They've not done that. When they've lost Oklahoma State and Texas, they're losing in those areas. They've got to button that up to have a chance. And they the couldn't way, do it last year with Colin Klein. Speaking of high-scoring offenses, it was 97 years ago this week, the all-time beatdown in college football. Georgia Tech and John Heisman beat Cumberland College 222 to nothing. They had 978 yards rushing. Cumberland had 14 wow. players. They wanted to cancel the game. Heisman said, eh, eh, come up here. Because the rankings were based on margin of victory. He made him play. 
he beat him to the play. ground. Was so that no huddle offense? How do you yeah. score that? that no I know exactly. Yeah. No mercy rule, right? Yeah. Nine of uh, rushing will do it. <laughs> let, let, let's toast with some Seattle coffee to closer games than that today.